We have a new book on Segio. He, he is, uh, it's called uh, Poems of a Mountain Home, and it's translated Burton Watson, and it's from Columbia in 1991. Includes uh, poems from Sun Kashi and Shinko Kinsu. Actually, I'm going to briefly skim the introduction to say that Segio, we of course have read Segio before, but we're, I think we're actually entering again to read Segio. Segio was born uh, 1118 in Kyoto. He sort of became a monk, a wandering monk, a religious a priest, Buddhist priest at age 23. There was a thing called Mapo, which is a form of Buddhism where you have to go go to Amida Buddha. If you had if you went to the Western Paradise, you still had a chance. If you went to the Western Paradise, a chance to escape from the decline of Buddhism, which followed. Arsegio actually liked a prior. He was a fan of No Lin. N O I N, a monk poet preceding him, just like uh, just like Basho, like Segio, but Segio apparently likes knowing. Just to speed it up here, he wrote in Waka poetry, thirty-one syllables, in Tonka or Waka. Uh, Almost done here. Okay. That's it. Start. Anyways, this is spring. Of course, he talks in seasons. He writes the seasons and uh, uh, spring. Page 19, ice, ice wedged fast in the crevice of the rock. This morning begins to melt under the moss. The water will be feeling out a channel. Ice wedged fast in the crevice of the rock. This morning begins to melt under the moss. The water will be feeling out a channel. These are all short poems. The deep snow that fell and piled up on the high peaks has melted. White waves dot the flow of clear torrent river. You can tell from the outline of the hills the way it's hazed over from this morning on will have springtime dawns. You can tell from the outline of the hills the way it's hazed over. From this morning on, we'll have springtime dawns. I guess you can tell the season by the haze. <laughs> Seashore haze, nor haze. There on the shore where they're boiling seaweed salt. The rising smoke lingers, rise up and mingles with the spring haze. There on the shore where they're boiling seaweed salt, the rising smoke lingers, rises up and mingles with the spring haze. Hmm. Seaweed. Seawater was poured over racks of seaweed in the water, dripping, dripping down, was then boiled to extract the salt, a common method of salt production. New greens. Well, the old year lasted. Sakasuga field was buried in snow. Now it's spring and new shoots are poking up. 
On the seventh day of the new year, people gathered the shoots of herbs and prepared a seven-herb rice gruel that was believed to ward off illness throughout the year. Kasuga Field in Nara was a well-known spot for gathering such herbs. The poem plays on Sumu to pile up as of snow and Sumu to pluck as of shoots. While the old year lasted, Kasuga Field was buried in snow. Now it's spring and the shoots are poking up. Seems he's not entirely a pessimistic Buddhist. Though. He likes the blossoms, he likes spring. They're saying, you know, there's a bit of pessimism and darkness in the, the Buddha, Buddhism of the period. <laughs> On young herbs, thinking of the past. Sad the haze in the meadow, where I pick young herbs, when I think how it shrouds me from the faraway past. Sad, the haze in the meadow where I pick young herbs. And I think how it shrouds me from the faraway past. Bush Wobbler idling. Do you remember any of these poems? <laughs> you must. These poems that we've read are probably reoccurring, but could be a different translator. Bush Wobbler idling seeping through the haze, the voice of a bush wobbler. Few people passing mountain village in spring. Mountain village usually designates a small community or settlement in the mountains, but Sagio often seems to be using it to refer to a single mountain dwelling where he lives alone in retirement. In his poetry, this word has strong connotations of isolation and loneliness. Sagio was like a hermit who lived in the mountains alone in a hut. Mm -hmm. What? He called himself village. It just said that he calls the mountain village refers to his own hut. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, he writes on isolation and loneliness, and he says he wants to be alone, but then he complains. Remember, he said he wanted to be alone, but then he complained that he's never mm -hmm. seeing anybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. Except for when the cherry blossoms come out, he longs to have company. Otherwise, forget about it. <laughs> yeah, we say all those poems. <laughs> Pheasant. It sounds as though he's hunting new shoots that have sprouted. Pheasant crying in the field in springtime gone. It sounds, it's about a pheasant. It sounds as though he's hunting new shoots that have sprouted. Pheasant crying in the field in springtime dawn. Of course, these are all about spring because it's under the title of spring. A reading from this book of Sagio. Mm -hmm. The plum tree at my mountain hut. Take note. The plum by my rustic hedge, halted in his tracks, total stranger who happens by. Strange, it says, take note, the plum by my rustic hedge, halted in his tracks, a total stranger who happened by. Don't understand that one, but. The plum halted. <laughs> hmm. 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 You 
these are mostly from the Poems of a Mountain poem. Shan Kasu. Spring showers in a mountain dwelling written at O'Hara. Says curtain curtained by spring showers. Pouring down from the eaves, a place where someone lives, a place where someone lives, idle, idle, unknown to others. Curtained by spring showers, pouring down from the eaves, a place where someone lives, idle, idle, unknown to others. Rice seedling beds. Mist seems to draw the water leading it into seedling beds as it hovers above the irrigation troughs. Mist seems to draw the water, leading it into seedling beds as it hovers above the irrigation troughs. Now the mist. <laughs> the mist is doing it? Seems to it? pay a different vividness than the bottom. The water. Well, uh, he's a poet. He's writing poetry. There's one one of the Buddhist masters complained. They said, they said back here that uh, that he they shouldn't be writing poetry. They should. A good Buddhist doesn't like to write poetry, and he says, he says he's going to split his head into Mangaku, he says. If he ever happens to encounter Sagio, he intends to split his head in two. But then Sagio goes to this temple, and then uh, actually Mangaku is far from splitting his head, receives him with great fury and courtesy. But he was going to split his head for writing poetry. He should have been meditating all the time, but uh, he's still a, a priest and a nice to him. Hmm. But the mountain home mill willow, poor people of the hills, a piece of the long slope taken over for their shack, and as though for a boundary that Jewel of a young willow. Poor people of the hills, a piece of the long slope taken over for their shack. And as though for a boundary, that jewel of a young willow. Now he's calling this mountain hill home willow. I wonder if he's talking about his house. <laughs> Maybe he's the poor person of the hills and this house is his. And could be. Who knows? Willow in the rain, tangled even further in the wind that dries them, the threads of green willow wet with rain. Willow in the rain, tangled even further in the wind that dries them, Threads of green willow wet with rain. On Mount Yoshino, snowflakes scattered down from cherry limbs one of those years when blossoms will come late. Yoshino is the Nara Prefecture south of the city of Nara and site of several famous temples and shrines and is noted for the Thousands of cherry trees that bloom in spring on the mountains. Sego frequently visited and for a time lived in a hut there. This is the famous Yoshino. On Mount Yoshino, snowflakes scattering down from cherry limbs one of those years when blossoms come late. We know that he went to these places and that Basho and everyone else was following behind him. <laughs> 